Andrew, you've done extensive research on First Ladies and focusing today on Mrs. Barbara Bush. Kind of give us some insight into what kind of person she's like. She's, she's a wonderful human being, and she continues to be one of the most prolific post-White House First Ladies in that the philanthropic work she's done after her time, or after her husband's time in office, has been extensive. She spends a lot of time in Maine at the Barbara Bush Children's Hospital in Portland. Uh, she, Over the years, she has traveled there on her birthday to read with children that are recovering and recuperating at the facility. I know that she has done video chats with children that are ailing and terminally ill uh, when they wanted to speak with her when she wasn't in town. She's a big advocate of literacy and reading. At the beat that the Bush Center in College Station, Texas, they continue to do bookmobile events and reading events and teaching events and all kinds of things like that. On top of holding the family together, she really is the matriarch of that Bush dynasty, and she is the strong one. We saw her most recently wheeling her husband out uh, at um, at the Super Bowl for the coin toss, and this is just the type of, uh, of, of woman she is. She's very strong, she's very persistent, and she is selfless in her, in her uh, serving of others throughout her life and career. What I hear from White House staffers who have come out and, and spoken about her, they all have very fond memories of her, and they all speak very highly of her. How would most people describe her, those that worked right there on the front lines? Well, that, that's an excellent point. Um, I know a number of Secret Service agents, uh, butlers, uh, people that work in the White House, people from the Bush administration, and, and, and people that have worked over many administrations. And that's the key here. People that know these people on a day-to-day basis intimately and work within the White House who have worked from, say, Carter through Reagan or, you know, Bush through through Bush or Bush through Clinton, you know, the ones that have been there for multiple administrations, they say time and time again, without question, that Barbara Bush was their favorite, taking politics out of it, taking everything aside, other than her just being a quality human being. It's because she remembers names, she remembers birthdays, pets' names, children's names, gives gifts on, for no reason at all, knows when someone is sick and asks how they're doing. She's just a genuinely nice human being, and everyone who comes in contact with her knows that and and is not afraid to say that she's their favorite. One of the things I found interesting as you were compiling um, this information about First Ladies and and working on your book, uh, you did some time in College Station, and you talked a little bit about a scrapbook that she had. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Of course, and, and it's not just a scrapbook. It is scrapbooks plural, and by plural, I mean a lot. There are hundreds of scrapbooks in the collection. Barbara Bush has been scrapbooking since she and H.W. started dating in the 40s, and these are, it's one of the most intimate ways I got to know a first lady, because think about your family photo albums. I think about my family photo albums. This humanizes a person. This shows a very, very public family in a very private sense. It shows them at Christmas time, Thanksgiving, building snowmen, birthdays, celebrations, uh, travel. And it was a really, a, a, I mean, it's a window into the soul. It's, it's, you know, these pictures show these, these, these people that we think we know so well from the camera and from their public service in their most private and, and familial uh, moments. And there are thousands of pictures and articles in thousands of pages of hundreds of scrapbooks, and I was able to peruse a lot of them. One of Mrs. Bush's favorites is of her time in China, and I think it was a very important time in their life when they were, all their children were, were, were grown or, or in college in their late teens and early 20s at this point, and it was one of the only times that Barbara Bush and then uh, Ambassador Bush got to spend just by themselves, and the pictures of them taking bicycle rides through through Beijing and, and being on the, 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 uh, the Great Wall and hosting parties with Chinese uh, diplomats just to sort of open up our relations during that time before we had an embassy over there. Um, it, it, was, it was 
really, really interesting. You see Barbara Bush in, in outfits that you wouldn't normally see her in. There's a great picture of her doing Tai Chi or some type of martial art exercise, and she's in sneakers and some pants and a sweatshirt. And that's just, it's not the Barbara Bush we picture when we picture Barbara Bush, but all of these women, all of these first ladies are special. They're all human beings. They live, they breathe, they live, they die. And, and, and Barbara Bush is one of those who so far has lived her life to the fullest and, and been in charge of her family's destiny and, and, and run it with, with, with it like a tight ship. She's just a remarkable individual. I spoke with a former White House chef who gave me a little bit of insight into the family, and he said that the family was much different than what the media portrayed them as as they were coming into office, being out of touch with with the country at the time. And he said that he wished that the media would have shown really kind of this different side that he saw. What else is something that someone may not know about this family? Well, you know, one of the interesting things that when I was working on the C-SPAN series, First Lady's Influence and Image, and I thought this said a lot about Barbara Bush. This was before uh, Jeb Bush was running uh, for, for president. She said, because it was speculative, you know, and, and everyone knew that Hillary Clinton was going to run, and Mrs. Bush, Mrs. Barbara Bush said, she thought that the country could find someone with a different last name someone whose last name wasn't Bush or wasn't Clinton, and that there were other people who could step up and take their turn. And I think that's very telling that she said, you know, that it, maybe her son isn't the one. Now, of course, when, when he decided to run, she, she threw her hat in the ring with full support and campaigned for him, as any good mother would, and as, of course, we would expect Barbara Bush to do. But I think that just shows that she knows her worth, her family's worth, and what they've already done already. And it's not... It, it doesn't surprise me at all to hear the pastry chef say this. There's, there's a lot of presidents that have seemed stiff and seemed older and seemed out of touch, but in their private lives, very in touch. There, there was a, a book came out within the past uh, five years or so. It's, the, it's the, um, the Richard Nixon love letters to Pat Nixon. And you don't think of this guy as a romantic. Any of our images of him from the news and from the media are kind of a stiff, kind of a grumpy, and people, you know, imitate his voice, which is which is very unique. And and he writes gorgeously romantic letters uh, to to his girlfriend and then wife Pat Nixon. So we really need to take a, a look, and and that's what my books do, really, because that's that's the way I wanted to research these women. What we know about Barbara. And what we know about all these first ladies are their time in the White House. But what were they before that? They were wives, mothers, daughters, aunts, cousins, little girls, teenagers. These are real people with real emotions, real lives. And it's very surprising to see how in touch and how special and unique these women are in their lives outside of the White House. And those are in my books, Unusual for Their Time. On the Road with America's First Ladies, Volume 1 and Volume 2. It covers everyone from Martha Washington to Melania Trump. And what I found about uh, both Bush women was remarkable when I went to each of their respective libraries or their husbands' libraries. They're, they're truly remarkable individuals who have had a partnership in the leadership and success of our country from number one, from Martha Washington. I really love seeing photos and videos of Mr. Bush and Mrs. Bush together because it kind of reminds me of the relationship my grandparents have and that they're still married to this day and it, it's just this long legacy that they got to leave and so it's really it's heartwarming to see as you were mentioning earlier you know her pushing him out her being the strong one it seems like she as much as she was behind the camera she really was there um, helping him throughout his presidency. 100%. And she's done very, very candid 60 Minutes interviews over the years, in office and out of office. She sat down with the C-SPAN cameras for the series and gave us a very candid interview. And the one I mentioned where she said, you know, you, I would think that you could find someone with a different name other than Clinton or Bush. She's, she's a very, very honest person. And she does. She's always had that grandmotherly charm to her. She's got a great sense of humor. She's got a self-deprecating sense of humor. People made mention of her not being very attractive. She said, no, it's not my looks. I just don't dress very well. I, she just, she's always had a charm about her. She's never turned down the call for public service. And when we look at her outside of the White House and as this 
this matriarch of, of this family that we, that we know so well. It's remarkable to learn the things about her that are more humanizing, the things that are uh, uh, the, the, the scrapbooks and the pictures and, and what she does with her time. And, and she's just, like I say, she was just a, a wildly successful and prolific first lady uh, after her time in the White House as well, which I think goes a very, very long way. All right. Is there anything else you would like to add? I just wish the Bush family my very, very best. And, uh, and Mrs. Bush, all the, all the good health in the world.